how, how. Hello, everyone. Ho, 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 ho. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Let's meet the panel. Ho, ho, ho. Santa. Daniel. And I'm Josh. Alrighty. The reason uh, this meatball is in a Santa suit uh, is because. Hold on, someone got sick right now. <laughs> this is the Christmas episode of Literary Gladiators. That's right, we are going to be talking about works that bring about a Christmas sediment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jim had a prior engagement uh, at the very last moment, but either way, uh, we wish him a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Okay. I guess we should start by uh, discussing uh, how do you define a Christmas sentiment? Danielle, Danielle how do you see uh, Christmas sentiment? It's the spirit of giving, mm. happiness, joy. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel uh, uh, around the Christmas? Holiday? Generally happy. Generally happy. Any specific uh, images that you, or a Snow, sense? fireplace. These things? Christmas tree, <laughs> family. Mm. I see it as a time of happiness. Everything you said, and to add on to that, it's a time of, I think, self-reflecting. I'm going to put this glow on. That's a good point. Self-reflection. Especially, especially if you are uh, been a naughty boy and you're on my bad boy list. That's true. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think I can take a point from that. Uh, I, I agree mostly with what Danielle has to say because I don't think I'm a, a naughty boy. Are you? I don't think so. I hope not. I better check my list twice. But I, I, I see, with regard to the imagery and the, uh, the senses, I Beautiful. see that uh, the holiday season, I, the Christmas music, the uh, the, the delicious food. I love food. The cookies, the cheese, the uh, you've got the uh, the gingerbread, which is also a cookie. The uh, the that. smell of uh, pine and yeah. incense. I think Pretty in some good. cultures they do incense. Mm -hmm. But other, it also has to do with the, the feeling of sediment and, and the giving. fact that you're a bit you feel a bit nicer yeah. mm -hmm. than you do most of the year. I don't work my nails as hard. I give them a little bit of a break on Christmas Eve. Uh, okay. Thank you, Russ. Okay. So now we are going to discuss the work that we feel provides us with the most Christmas sediment because this is a literary web show, so we got everything else uh, taken care of. Uh, Danielle, uh, what work do you feel uh, sparks Christmas? Uh, Spirit. Spirit. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I would say the Christmas Carol because I feel like it's the essence of the Christmas spirit and Scrooge serves as the opposite of Christmas spirit but then in the end he comes around and I feel like that's like such a classic example of like if somebody's acting in a way where they're you know going to shop for Christmas gifts and they're waiting in long lines and they're complaining and they're angry somebody might say to them oh stop being such a Scrooge it's like a classic example and it comes from such a classic piece of literature that displays that idea. I see that it is quite odd that people make that uh, connection because if someone were really a Scrooge, they wouldn't even be at the department store to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's and, true. Which, it's funny that nowadays people feel themselves. that Christmas <laughs> is Christmas is a necessity as opposed to what it really is. Mm -hmm. And that people, oh, I have to do the shopping. You, oh, I see what you're saying. I have to do the, I have to make the turkeys. Ego it's the whole. It's, it's like the obligation instead okay. of an enjoyment. Yeah, yeah. and the, and it's become this whole commercialized uh, yeah. business where people are actually opening up on Thanksgiving, which is horrible. Most definitely wrong. Yeah, especially if you work in retail. Consider how you would feel if you're you're working in Boscos or uh, Sears. I don't know if anyone's been to Sears lately. I know, about that. I know Kmart's open. Uh, yeah, Kmart. Uh, Macy's was open last year on uh, Thanksgiving night. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to go to Toys R Us, man. Where I work, they close on Thanksgiving, <coughs> I mean, I so I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
but it, it's a season to relax, have have some time with the family, especially if you don't want to get along. Just for one day, you can get along and just and, and coexist peacefully. You're hearing that from Santa Claus. <laughs> Cookie time. <laughs> so, uh, Santa Charlie, what work do you feel brings the uh, displays your uh, Christmas spirit? To be honest, it's the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Just kidding. I honestly, I think the night before Christmas, it's obviously, a, it's a, don't look close now, oops. It's, it's obviously a children's tale, and it's, I find it very sentimental. Every Christmas Eve, my father would read it to me before I would go to sleep. I'm like, Daddy, tell me it again. And he would go back, and he would reread it to me several times, just just because of pure enjoyment. And <laughs> yes, I just want to make sure there's no cookies up there. You all know I have a cookie obsession, but <laughs> it's also I don't know, I, when I when I go back every Christmas Eve, I'll read it and I'll say this is it brings back memories from the past, uh, childhood gone by, nostalgia. I'm saying, I, right? nostalgia. Yeah, I, that may, yeah, it does. I I did the same. My uh, mother and family uh, read that to me as well when I was younger around the holiday, uh, Christmas season. And I feel that, that mm -hmm. the uh, feelings that you invoke are yeah. most definitely uh, truthful. And Especially if you get, oh, I'm sorry, did I go off? No, not at all. Good. Well, now I'm on the naughty list. <laughs> um, I also feel that it will, maybe, it's also, like, Excuse me. It's passing it down the generation to generation. This is not a new book. You've heard of it. I've heard of it. You've heard of it, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard of it. Mm -hmm. What about you? Just talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a classic. It's what they call a timeless classic. And maybe someday, if I ever decide to marry and have kids, my own, I'll read it to them. And mm -hmm. then I would have to wear this and you know find my way down the chimney. I don't know how that would work. But it, it's okay. and it. What I'm saying is, is a timeless classic, and it's. Meant to be. That would be a bit challenging for you in the gym, but or at least you're going to the gym. I have I actually have joined a gym. That that's alone right there. I'm surprised I didn't get hit by a lightning bolt right now. But yeah. <laughs> Already, uh, this will move on to my work, uh, which I bent the rules a little bit with regard to the work that you're sparks on the sediment. But the uh, there is an episode of the Twilight Zone known as the Night of the Meek that. Oh. Was eventually became a uh, a story within a collection, and it was written by Rod Serling, who created the program. Uh, it follows this uh, gentleman who is an alcoholic, uh, Henry Corbin, <coughs> who all he needs to do is go to the department store and perform Santa for a few hours on Christmas Eve, but he comes over, he's wasted. And uh, the owner of the department store scolds him for doing so, and but then he comes across this uh, supernatural bag, which usually holds garbage, but in his case, is able to produce any gift that one may want. So if I wanted a brand new set of drugs, or better yet, world peace. If I wanted world peace, could I do that? I don't. That. You probably could uh, engage in something like that, but that's never, they never look at that. They no, look at, it's just a, it's just one a, of the, the, the ending is probably one of the most sentimental pieces yeah. where I Santa, where Corwin gets his own gift. Yes. But the, uh, it, it can produce a, a cherry brandy from 1903 which uh, leads on to the theme of alcoholism and the fact that alcohol and we're is... About some he, he drinks it because he can drink or weep. For uh, Dundee's case, uh, he drinks because he's exhausted. Alcohol is always an option, but in many cases it's not the right option. And if you're me, every year, cutting up the cookies, you know, having the cookies every year, you know, change it up a little bit. Maybe a brownie, I don't know. No. The way that it's portrayed in literary form, it's a bit more, uh, it fits more to that particular uh, category. Uh, mm -hmm. Sterling doesn't create as many uh, opportunities for jokes, such as uh, a Percival Smithers wanting a new name. 
I see. Go ahead. There were definitely pieces that we left off of here as well. Uh, there was uh, the gift of the Magi. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's obviously that's something that most of us have read. <laughs> but uh, the the whole idea of being so passionate about one individual that you would be willing to trade in one of your favorite possessions in order to get an accommodation for one of their favorite possessions. Oh, so if somebody, for, for example, if somebody asked me for a cookie, I would say, fine, but you have to give me those 1969 stimulants. It would be more so along the lines of... Uh, You'd be willing to give up a cookie. <laughs> I, I, li somebody. <laughs> I like books, and you like cookies. And I was going to get you a cookie jar, but I would have to give up my books. And you want to get me a bookshelf, but you have to give up your cookies. I can't even build a bookshelf. Nor give up your cookies. <laughs> yeah, that, that, Danielle is right. So, and then you had another work that you wanted to discuss, but uh, I did. Yeah, you had mentioned okay, something you. about, uh, but it, you hadn't. Uh, it was the movie that you were. Uh, oh well, the movies. I think Christmas movies are so great, like Elf. Mm -hmm. but, oh, I mean, good. it's not a literary text, but I feel like those movies do a really good job to invoke the Christmas spirit. If I'm not mistaken. Elf was a children's story. Was it really? I want to say so. I'm not. I'm Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Santa Alone. Claus. I love the Santa Claus. I Sam Allen, my favorite. Oh, he's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's so funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More into the Christmas special, it's the, mm. uh, the, uh, the original. Screwed off the Red Nose Reindeer, yeah. Santa Claus is coming to town. Uh, a Christmas story. I wish I would have liked It's a Wonderful Life a bit better, but about 80% of the movie is the closing of the bank, and not necessarily the story of uh, Jimmy Stewart's character uh, wishing he had never been born. It's, uh, the whole concept is excellent, but the uh, Execution, uh, it's still a classic, but I, yeah. I could have liked it a little bit more. I think no matter what text, movie, TV show, they all set a level of idyllic Christmas spirit. There's not really a movie, even though they encounter turbulence around, like in the course of the text or the movie, it always comes back together in this idyllic picture of Christmas, and I think it sets a standard for everybody else. I would agree that the uh, the Christmas the special, classics. just having specials on mm -hmm. in the Christmas spirit, the spirit. Yep. there's people that look forward to those kind of, even ABC Family has already released their list. Mm -hmm. uh, um, would you like, do you have anything to say? I don't really. Watch a good Christmas movie. Watch a good Christmas text. I agree with uh, both of those things. Curl just, up by a fire. Just have a good time. Have a good is, it's, the hol it's the Christmas season, the holiday season. It's just a time to just sit back and relax. And buy that extra present for that one person, even if even if it's even if it's for charity. Do I'm big on charity, even though I might be coming off as a major goofball right now. I wonder why. Charity is a good thing. And always, it begins at home. Charity begins at home, but also do something else for someone else, even if it takes an extra 15 minutes of your day. It's Very well said. I'll give you a bonus point on the list. Yep. Ho, ho, ho! Now I can't stop saying it. I think you lose points by doing that. What? Screaming that loud. Alrighty, if you are interested in reading the text that we have mentioned, uh, Gift of the Magi you can find in plenty of collections. Uh, Christmas Carol you can find in just about any bookstore. It was the night before Christmas, I hope you can find it anywhere. Yeah. My pick for uh, A Night of the Meek, uh, New Stories from the Twilight Zone is where you would be able to find it. It's very rare. Uh, I found it off of Amazon, but you're, that's going to be your best bet, and you may have to wait. But I, I would more so suggest that you buy the whole collection because it's an excellent uh, series. Uh, but be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators to my friend and editor Ari and my other Jewish friends, Happy Hanukkah. To anybody that's celebrating, uh, have a Merry Christmas and God bless.